you must know how to train fleas. And so my question in this uh, live presentation here in front of all of you folks, how many of you in this audience, and all I want you to do is be honest with me, how many of you do not know how to train fleas? Can I see your hands, please? <laughs> hey, you got here just in time. I know you heard the one about the two fleas at the bottom of the hill, and one of them says, well, do we walk or take a dog? <laughs> Well, anyhow, you, uh, <laughs> you train fleas by putting them in a jar. And you put the top on the jar and you watch those fleas and they'll jump up and they'll hit the top over and over and over and over and over and over. You watch them jump. And finally, after they've been jumping a long time, you will notice that even though they continue to jump, all of a sudden they are no longer jumping high enough to hit the top. Then it's an absolute fact. You can just take the top off of the jar and they'll keep on jumping and jumping and jumping and jumping, but they cannot, I repeat, cannot jump out. You see, they have conditioned themselves to jump just so high. And once they've conditioned themselves to jump just so high, that's all there is. There ain't no more. Man is the same way. He starts out in life to climb the mountain, to write the book, to break the record, to do something with his life. But along the way, he bumps his head, he stubs his toe, and he becomes what I call a snipe-op. Now that's spelled S-N-I-O-P. And that's a person who is susceptible to the negative influence of other people. The life of Zig Ziglar is a powerful reminder that with faith, determination, and a positive attitude, you can achieve your greatness. Before he was one of the most iconic motivational speakers of all time, Zig Ziglar was a struggling door-to-door -door cookware salesman facing rejection after rejection and was barely scraping by. But instead of giving up, Zig transformed his failures into fuel for greatness, rising to become a legendary leader who inspired millions. So how did a small town boy from Alabama go from knocking on doors to standing on the world's largest stages? What were the secrets behind his incredible transformation? So I want y'all to join me as we uncover the rags to riches story of Zig Ziglar, a man who proved that with the right mindset, determination, and a little touch of faith, you can truly turn your life around and leave an unforgettable legacy. This is one story you definitely want to make sure you stick around and watch until the end. Let's go. Now, how it all started? Zig's life was a masterclass in resilience, positivity, and turning challenges into stepping stones for his success. He was born on November the 6th in 1926 in Coffee County, Alabama. Zig was the 10th of 12 children in a poor farming family. Now, when he was just five years old, tragedy struck, and the death of his father and his younger sister, which left the family struggling to make ends meet. Now, despite these hardships, Zig developed a deep sense of determination that would carry him on throughout his life. In the beginning, Zig started his career as a door-to-door -door cookware salesman for the Wherever Aluminum Company. His early days in sales were anything except easy. Zig faced constant rejection and he struggled to make consistent sales like a lot of people struggle with today. Oftentimes, he doubted his ability to be successful and his ability to succeed. In fact, he nearly quit sales altogether and went and got a job at a fast food restaurant. But what did he do? I'm going to give you an example of how he turned his obstacle into a success. A pivotal moment came when Zig's mentor, P.C. Morrell, he encouraged him to believe in himself and to develop his craft. Inspired by P.C. Morrell's mentorship, Zig began studying successful sales techniques and adopting a positive mindset. And what happened was within a few years, he became one of the top salespeople at his company, which proves that persistence and self-improvement can overcome even the toughest challenges. Now, riding that wave of success in the mid-1960s, Zig faced a career setback when his company downsized. And when they downsized, he lost his sales job. At a crossroads, Zig could have given up or returned to the safety of a typical nine to five job. But instead, he decided to follow his passion for teaching and inspiring others through sales. Now, what did he do to be able to turn being laid off into a stepping stone for his future progress. Zig transitioned 
into motivational speaking and sales training. And what he did is he combined his experience in overcoming rejection with a newfound passion for helping other people. And his first big break came when he delivered a speech at a company conference. The audience went wild in their enthusiasm. It gave him the confidence to pursue his public speaking full time, which thank God he did because he helped change the life, not just of myself, but millions of other entrepreneurs, successful salespeople, businessmen and women, all around the world. Now, as Z got started in his speaking career, he wanted to document, and as a matter of fact, he wanted to share what he had learned along the way from being a struggling cookware salesman to becoming the top in the company, to being let go due, a com due to a company downsize, to being able to pick himself up again and, be and starting this uh, a whole new career path as a motivational speaker. Now, when what Z decided to do, he said, I'm going to write a book. Now, when he set out to write his first book, which is called See You at the Top, it's an awesome read if you haven't already read it. He faced numerous rejections from publishers who doubted the fact that anybody would want to read a book, a motivational book at that, by an unknown author. Nobody wanted, nobody saw any future in that. As a matter of fact, many of the publishers advised him to just ditch the project altogether. But Zig persevered and decided he was going to self-publish the book. And guess what? His determination, it paid off. See You at the Top became a bestseller. And to date, it sold millions of copies nationwide. And what that book did is solidified Zig Ziglar's reputation as a thought leader in personal development and it opened doors to even greater opportunities. After putting out See You at the Top and solidifying his reputation as one of the best motivational speakers and also one of the best sales coaches. Although known for his dynamic stage presence, Zig initially struggled with stage fright in the beginning. He had self-doubt, all of those things that come into all of our minds during his earlier speaking engagements. Speaking in front of a large audience was, was very terrifying for Zig, but he knew he had the information. He knew he had the skill set. He just had to overcome the fear monster. You know what fear stands for, right? False evidence appearing real. That's what fear is. Anything you fear hasn't happened. Think about it. You're fearing it. It's a future thing. So it's false evidence appearing real. The reason why it's false evidence is not real. And the fact that we have the ability or the power and the impact to be able to redirect and change that. The reason why it's called the present moment is because it is a gift. Because within this moment is everything you need to be able to take yourself to another level. You have got to know that. You have got to know that. As a matter of fact, if you find yourself struggling at your dealership to convert customers, if you find yourself struggling with that fear, if you find that self-doubt creeps into your mind, if you're looking at other people and you're wondering, how come it's them and not you? I was there once. So have been tons of others. You're hearing the story of Zig now. I invite you, I encourage you to go to sellingforsuccess.org. It's my sales training platform. And I have complete courses, audios, and videos that are done just for you. The fact that you're watching this video right now is not by mistake. You didn't find this by chance. There's something you're supposed to gain. And a lot of times we let the good get in front of the great. Or we fear the fact that we may have to invest time in ourselves. Or heaven forbid, we actually may have to invest resources in ourselves. But when you get sick and tired of walking over dollars to pick up dimes, you realize you're going to have to pay some form of sweat equity or actual monetary resource and exchange. It's either the sweat equity putting in the years, the blood, sweat, and the tears going through the trial by fire, or it's the investment that can help you leap years where you don't have to make the same mistakes, bump your head a thousand times, and go through the trial by fire because it's already been done for you. I invite and I encourage you, visit Selling for Success. Start treating yourself instead of cheating yourself. Because one thing I'll tell you right now, if you can't invest time, if you don't feel like you can invest time or resources in yourself today, how can you possibly believe you can be able to afford it tomorrow? The way that Zeke overcame his fears is by practicing relentlessly, role plan, role plan, what you should be doing, studying in great oratory, and focusing on the value the value that he could provide to his audience. 
And what happened is his charisma, his ability to connect with people, it became hallmark. He became known by his ability to make a person in the audience feel like they're talking to them. His ability to make a customer feel like his product was customized just for them. And by the 1980s, Zig was delivering up to 200 speeches a year to major international corporations, global organizations around the world. Now, later in life, Zig faced the loss, his beloved wife, Jean, and it devastated him as it would in, in any of us. These personal tragedies, they tested Zig's faith and his resilience, but it also deepened his sense of purpose. Instead of retreating and, and, and taking his money and his success up to that point and just calling it quits, Zig channeled his grief and put it into his work, using his experiences to connect more deeply with his audience. He spoke about the importance of faith, family, perseverance, and continued inspiring other people to find strength in their own challenge. At the time when Zig entered the motivational speaking circuit, the concept of sales training was very underdeveloped. Not too many people or company were doing it. Many salespeople relied on instinct rather than structured strategies leading to what we know now know to be inconsistent results. And that's where you're just winging it and going off the gut, but you don't know what's working. You don't know what's not working. So you just keep throwing these things in a big pot like gumbo, hoping that it comes out with a successful sale on the other end. And what Zig did, he took that, he structured it, and he gave salespeople a way to go from zero to the leader of the sales board. Zig developed a comprehensive system of motivational sales training that combined practical techniques with mindset coaching. His programs, including The Secrets of Closing the Sale, revolutionized the sales industry and became essential for professionals worldwide. You see, one thing I want you to take away from Zig is that Zig Ziglar turned every obstacle he faced into an opportunity for growth, proving that success isn't about avoiding difficulty, but it is about rising above. The life of Zig Ziglar is a powerful reminder that with faith, determination, and a positive attitude, you can achieve your greatness. I remember my beginnings. And then I thought about the young Brian or that young lady that wants to do better for their family. They want to achieve greater things. They just don't know how to get there. They just don't know. And like Zig Ziglar, that inspired me to take what I had learned, my trials, my failures, my successes, the things I learned along the way from excellent and phenomenal sales trainer courses on communication, asking questions, executing myself in the dealership day after day after day consistently and I took it and then I created my course how to dominate at the dealership and everything took off and then I started sales professionals of America recruiting the staffing and sales training agency in the automotive industry that works with major dealer groups nationwide and now you know I feel like one of the most fortunate blessed men in the world but you know why it's because that man Zig Ziglar decided that he wasn't going to quit because if he would have quit, guess what? It's millions of us, millions of us, who knows what would happen. So whose life could be potentially waiting on you to make an impact? Where if you give up, they'll miss their mark. There's a lot more people depending on you than just you. It's those you see, but it's even those that we can't see. So before you give up on yourself, before you give up on what you're doing, and I don't care whether you're in automotive sales, sales of any kind, cooking, banking, real estate, it does not matter. Make sure that you've given yourself a real fighting chance. You've done the training, you've read the books, you've put in the sweat equity, you've reached out for the help, you've sought out the mentors. And even then, you still don't quit. You may have to pull it back and restructure and redirect it because if you feel it's for you, you don't have that feeling just for no reason. And guess what? The reader reason it may be a little bit more challenging is because when you get there, it'll be that much more sweet. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I just want to take some time to share with you someone that meant a lot in my life, Mr. Zig Ziglar. I want to salute to Zig. I hope he rests in paradise. And I look forward to seeing you at the top and at the dealership. Over and out, y'all. Remember, be great.